thank you all for joining us here today. Uh, I have the Secretary of Health, Kim Malson Risden with me, and also the Secretary of Tribal Affairs, uh, David Flute. I appreciate them being here as well. I want to provide a quick update on some economic development loans that we have been working on. It's called the Small Business Relief Fund. And a couple of high level details for your information is that we have uh, spent $10.5 million that have gone out the door to 200 businesses across the state of South Dakota. These businesses literally span the entire state from every corner to every region. Custer, Spearfish, Rapid City, Pier, Huron, Mobridge, Aberdeen, Watertown, Mitchell, Brookings, Sioux Falls, Yankton, Vermilion, and North Sioux City. We're helping restaurants, retail shops, hotels, salons, trade shops, construction, and manufacturing, and many more different kinds of businesses. From the time that this uh, legislation was signed into law until the time we approved the final loan allocating the dollars of relief, it took just over three weeks. And so I specifically want to thank our team over at Economic Development. They were amazing in how they recognized the need that these family businesses had to pay bills, to be able to keep their operation going, to provide for their employees and their families. And they worked overtime many times through the night to make sure that they got those dollars out the door as soon as possible. Uh, also recognizing that sometimes the the loans and the help that was available at the federal level would take much longer. They knew it was important for the state to respond immediately. I wanted to give you a quick update on some supplies that will be going out from the state of South Dakota to our healthcare providers. Uh, as healthcare providers resume services throughout the state to take care of folks, securing the appropriate personal protective equipment from vendors, vendors will be critical to make sure that they can continue their operations. So I'd like to invite the Secretary of Health up to talk a little bit about how the state is going to get PPE out to these healthcare providers. Thank you, Governor. As we've talked in the past, um, it, the supply chain for certain aspects of personal protective equipment has been challenging um, for our healthcare providers um, to uh, be able to order that, that equipment on their own. We've heard that from certain providers in particular. Um, we at the state level have also had some challenges, but um, just recently have seen some easing of the supply chain, and so I'm very pleased that we're in a position now to be able to help those medical providers across the state with their PPE needs. Um, this will be limited um, as our supplies are still um, uh, limited, and we have to make sure that we'll have enough for any COVID response um, specifically, but we'll be working with the professional licensing boards um, that are part of the Department of Health. We have 13 different boards um, to work with their licensed members on distributing um, a limited supply of N95 masks, surgical masks, uh, face shields, and other equipment um, that will help people provide health care. Um, I just want to do a shout out to all the health care workers in the state. Um, it's been obviously a very challenging time on so many fronts, and um, one of the things that we're seeing is people um, foregoing regular health care and, so, and that can be a real risk to people's health as well. So we want to make sure people are able to get the health care that they need in a safe way and making sure that people have PPE is, is part of that. So I'm um, really glad to have this announcement today and uh, see a positive change in that area. And again, for those that have been reaching out wanting PPE, the State Department of Health will be working with the licensing boards um, to make sure that that's allocated out in a fair manner. Uh, we've also had a lot of questions about the checkpoint issues uh, with tribes in the state of South Dakota. So I've asked Secretary Flute if he would join us today and address some of the timeline and communication and relationships that he's had with our tribes and what is going on in regards to the checkpoints. So with that, I'll turn it over to Secretary Flute. I want to say thank you, Governor. Uh, I want to say good afternoon to all of you here today. Uh, I'd like to speak my language a little bit. Taku i wohen da kapikta. He to katakia, oyate iwa stepte, te ta yachupikta. 
for those of you that don't know me, I'd like to share a brief introduction of myself to the state of South Dakota. My name is David Flute. Uh, I am a member of the Siston Wapton Sioux Tribe, former tribal council member of my tribe, and a former tribal chairman. I served on a number of regional boards for our tribe, and I did serve uh, on the HHS Secretary's Tribal Advisory uh, Board for a period there. Um, I, I'm a member, I was a member of the South Dakota Army National Guard. Uh, I did serve a, a tour with the 235th Military Police Company in Afghanistan. And that brought me a lot of experience, uh, gave me uh, some time to uh, reflect on service to my country and to get into tribal public service. And that's why I got into tribal government. I want to share a little bit about the work we've been doing with our tribes in COVID-19. Uh, the one most important is communication and I'm very thankful for Secretary Malsom Rideson and her team in working with the Department of Tribal Relations and having us to facilitate these calls, the, the, the tribal weekly calls, where she's able to provide information to the tribes and offering the tribes an opportunity to ask questions of the Department of Health. Uh, we've been in contact with Region 8, uh, with FEMA, Region 8. Uh, we were coordinating some, uh, some important communications with them. Uh, an example is the tribes. A few of our tribes were slaughtering their buffalo to, to increase their food surplus. They were slaughtering their livestock, uh, wanting to prepare for any shortages in food. And the question had never been asked of if this is a reimbursable expense. And my agency and my team uh, had reached out and had asked that question to Region uh, 8, and they were able to get us an answer, and, and, and it was a good answer. The tribes are able to, to uh, use that as a reimbursable cost. So those are just a couple of things uh, among disseminating uh, a lot of information to our tribes that come from Indian Health Service, BIA Regional. Uh, we've been sharing a lot of information uh, on the COVID, any updates. But you know, among other things this past uh, year and last 18 months, uh, you know, we've worked on other issues uh, where, where the key to accomplishing those issues was communication. And I felt it was necessary, and I'm very thankful for the governor uh, inviting me here today to share uh, information that I think is important and it's fair uh, to share with the state of South Dakota uh, as South Dakota citizens, not just as tribal members that are listening, but all of South Dakota, that on behalf of the governor, when these checkpoints uh, uh, were, were being established by uh, our tribes, a few of our tribes, uh, we were alerted to it. And we shared that with the governor and we shared it with senior leadership and, and we had it on our radar and we were monitoring uh, how those checkpoints were being operated. Um, unfortunately, uh, Chairman Frazier and I had, had a couple of calls, and the chairman's a good friend of mine. Um, he was sharing with me that the, that the checkpoints were running smooth and, and that there were no complaints, and I would share with the chairman uh, that we were hearing different and that there were some concerns and, and, and some complaints from both his tribal members and from non-tribal members. And so we felt it was necessary uh, to share that information. Uh, and on behalf of the governor, uh, I was asked to reach out to Chairman Frazier and other tribes in the area uh, if they would join us for a conference call so that we could hear their concerns and that they could also uh, hear our concerns that from the constituent calls we were getting and, and, and just general concerns, we, we felt it was best to communicate on April 18th, I had, I had shared with the chairman we were going to try to coordinate a call with him. Uh, and on April 21st, uh, and I say this respectfully, uh, being a former chairman myself, uh, I respect Chairman Frazier, but respectfully, uh, the chairman declined. The chairman flat out said he would not join the state of South Dakota for a conference call to discuss this tribal checkpoint issue. And so I, I felt that it was necessary uh, to share that information with the state of South Dakota, as I am disheartened, uh, not, not just as an enrolled member or as a former tribal chairman that, that, that understands 
uh, communication is key when you're talking to other governments, but also as a South Dakota citizen. Uh, I'm disheartened with the attacks on Governor Nome, and I felt it was necessary that um, the time is right to share that information, considering the, the current uh, things that are being said, uh, just to share that the state of South Dakota did reach out to the chairman and ask for him to join us on a conference call so that we could work this out at the lowest level possible. I'll say thank you. Thank you, Secretary Flute. And uh, we have been, as far as the state of South Dakota, communicating with our tribal leadership. Um, I personally have communicated with Chairman Frazier through phone calls and texts as well. And we're hoping that we can come to an agreement. Um, what we're looking for is clarification uh, and respecting tribal sovereignty, which is something I always have done in my words and in my actions, but also making sure that we have the ability to protect people. Uh, and this is a sticky situation because we have um, federal authorities on U.S. and state highways. Um, I recognize uh, that uh, it would take federal action uh, for the law to be upheld, but yet South Dakota is leading our COVID-19 response and making sure that we are doing that responsibly and able to get adequate supplies, needs, and emergency services to people should they need that. So uh, I have sent a further communication with Chairman Frazier today and look forward to his response on a plan that we could agree to to make sure that we're both happy with the situation going forward. Uh, I want to end on a couple of other notes uh, that have to do with this week. Uh, this week is National Hospital Week. And so uh, for all of you across the state of South Dakota, if you have the opportunity to thank not just those on the front lines, the doctors and the nurses, emergency room personnel, people that have been working overtime to take care of us, um, we really do appreciate them. But also the leadership that's making decisions uh, that have linked arms with us to make sure we're making the best decisions for South Dakota. I have so appreciated um, even the administrators and the leadership of our hospital systems because I don't think in any other state in this country have we had all the hospital systems in the state stand side by side with the Department of Health and commit so much time and resources to helping us make the best decisions possible for the people of South Dakota. They've been candid, they've been honest, they've helped us come up with projections to make sure we're making wise decisions and I just so appreciated that. Uh, and their commitment to making sure that the decisions were not just keeping their own best interest in mind, but the people of South Dakota in mind. And so uh, their ability to take care of the people that work for them that are out on the front lines, um, I appreciate those doctors and nurses and folks working in our healthcare facilities because they've been amazing and we couldn't have possibly even thought about accomplishing a little bit of what we've done without them. It also is law enforcement week. We've asked a lot of our first responders the last several months, and again, I, I want them to know how much we appreciate them being out there, filling in extra duties, doing things that they maybe haven't in the past on a regular basis because of the situation that we're in. But if you have a law enforcement officer in your family or in your community, reach out to them. Maybe put a mention on their Facebook page or, or call them or send an email or maybe even write them a note. I know they would certainly appreciate it. And finally, our 114th Fighter Wing in Sioux Falls is planning to participate in the Air Force Salutes Flyover Initiative. Um, this 114th Wing is going to have their own flyover on May 16th. It's uh, going to fly over our East River area hospitals, and this is their chance to recognize our healthcare workers and first responders uh, that have been on the front lines of the COVID-19 effort. So, Details of where they will be flying and what time will be on covid.sd.gov. Uh, for those of you that haven't been able to see a flyover yet, it's incredibly impressive. And, and uh, I would encourage you on May 16th to set aside some time to go outside and to see the flyovers over these hospitals, uh, East River, because it's going to be impressive. And we're so grateful for their service to our nation. Uh, with that, we'll open it up to any questions that you may have. Heather, this is Stephen Gross Sure, go ahead, Stephen. Uh, so, can you tell me a little bit about what the plan is moving forward uh, with this checkpoint issue? Will you file a lawsuit against the tribes that have checkpoints up? I've sent communication to Chairman Frazier today, and I'm hopeful that he will respond. 
So right now there's no lawsuit in the works? There is not a lawsuit at works today, no. Uh, Gordon Richard, and also to Union Hunt tonight. Sure, go ahead, Gordon. Yeah, Governor, on the, uh, um, there were 17, what, legislators that have written you wanting to help intervene in the whole reservation uh, situation. Are you going to be soliciting their help? And then is, is Secretary of Food, is he your um, uh, tribal liaison on your cabinet? Yes, Secretary Flute is my Tribal Relations Secretary. He's a cabinet official and one of my closest advisors. Um, and uh, we have visited with some of those folks that have signed on to that letter um, and appreciated those conversations. I don't know if Secretary Flute has anything he'd like to add, uh, but he has given me incredible wisdom and insight into these relationships um, that, uh, you know, we're, we've, those legislators, we talk on a daily basis. They talk to my staff on a daily basis. I know that Secretary Flute has had conversations as well with them in the past. Uh, and so I'm not certain what else we could potentially do to hear more from them and their thoughts and their expertise. Governor Nolan. Hi, this is Alexis Davila of Lakota Territory Meeting. Okay. Um, I understand that you've talked a lot to Sheriff Frazier. Has that same effort, um, a lot of effort of communicating to Julian Guerra as well as his wife? Uh, I have not personally spoken or communicated with Julian Bear Runner. I know my team has spoken with him, and I'll let Secretary Flute uh, speak a little bit to communications that he may have experienced uh, with the Oglala. Yeah, Secretary Flute, Tribal Relations, thank you for the question. Uh, we have, again, you know, communication is key. Uh, both, both parties have to be at the table when you communicate, and we have uh, extended uh, our hand on behalf of the governor in the state of South Dakota to President Bear Runner a number of times. Uh, we did have one one conversation with him. Uh, it was in in specifically to a tribal member of his that was being released from the Department of Corrections, and she wanted to make sure she would have free passage onto the reservation. Um, unfortunately, that. Uh, that didn't turn out the way she had anticipated. But um, we, we have reached out to uh, the, o the Oglala Sioux Tribe and, and, and we share information with them all the time. Thank you. Hi, this is Alex Portals of Black Hills Planet here. Sure, Alex, go ahead. Hi, uh, so your office is arguing that these checkpoints are illegal and that they need to be removed. Uh, if the checkpoints are illegal today, they were illegal the day they went up. Why has it taken so long for legal action to be mentioned? Uh, because we've been working with the tribes to get the issues resolved. Thank you. Megan Wright, News Center One. Sure, go ahead. Um, you just mentioned that, or Secretary Flute just mentioned that they've had one conversation with the Oglala Sioux Tribe. What conversations have been, have been had with the Oglala Sioux Tribe in relation to these checkpoints during that time then? They are included on all the weekly calls uh, that happen in, uh, with the Department of Health on COVID-19 issues. Also, Chairman uh, Secretary Flute has, reaches out to all the chairmen on a regular basis and shares all the same information with uh, President Bear Runner that he does with every other tribal chairman. All opportunities are given to every single chairman and president of our tribes equally. Uh, uh, Governor Nell, with Cota Territory News again. Yes. Um, I understand that you also have kind of push for municipality and, and local type of governments to help make decisions with coronavirus because they might be best at understanding how to protect their people. Um, why is that seeming not to play out when it comes to these tribal checkpoints and not being in the hands of just the tribal law? Well, that's a completely inaccurate statement. Uh, the tribes do have authority on BIA roads. If they chose to set up checkpoints on BIA, BIA roads, I've told them that would be acceptable. Instead, they chose to set them up on state and federal highways, and that's where the issue happens. That is where we need some clarification on, on how those can be conducted and if they can be there at all. Thank you. 
Governor, this is Stephen Gross from AP. Sure, Stephen. Um, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about uh, kind of your approach and your thinking uh, with issuing the letter to the two tribes on Friday, giving them uh, 48 hours to to take down the checkpoints um, with, and threatening legal action if they didn't. Uh, why was that necessary at that point? And uh, you know, is this a change in the approach that you had taken previously? No, we had had previous uh, conversations for weeks prior to that. On Friday, we needed a resolution, uh, and that is why we gave them a time frame in which we would anticipate a response. We have a question here in the room. Bob, did you have a question? Yeah, Governor, no. Bob Mercer with Caliban News. Uh, have you given any thought or have you discussed at all with uh, your State Department of Transportation about putting up any signs that warn travelers or <laughs> advise travelers that there are checkpoints ahead, whether it's down in Okalala or at, uh, Pine Ridge or at Cheyenne River? No, we haven't considered uh, putting up any kind of uh, warning system or using the DOT to let travelers, travelers know that there would be checkpoints ahead. Obviously, we have um, every extra resource focused on COVID-19 uh, in the state of South Dakota, and DOT has been incredibly helpful to us as well in responding to extra duties and responsibilities. Um, the capacity to do that I, with as many checkpoints as are out there uh, would be something that I would wonder if we even had the ability to do. Come on, Megan, right here. Megan, we're going to go to Patrick in the room and then I'll come to you. Every good deal has a compromise. What's the compromise with the uh, tribes as you see it? Well, it's pretty much what I've been visiting with them about for weeks now is that if they wanted to have these checkpoints on BIA roads uh, and believed that that they felt that was appropriate, that that is something that they have the opportunity to do. Um, we have been consistent in our message uh, that, that this becomes an issue when those checkpoints are set up on state highways and on U.S. highways. Okay, Megan, go ahead. Thank you, Governor. Uh, Secretary Flute mentioned that Chairman Frazier had some calls and said that the checkpoints on the Cheyenne River were running smooth and there were zero complaints, but the state has heard otherwise. What has been heard from the Oglala Sioux tribe in relation to that, and have there been any concerns um, from both tribal or non-tribal members? You mean as far as people running into issues with checkpoints down on Oglala? Yes. Yeah, hi, Secretary Flu, Tribal Relations. Thank you for the question. You know, when we started, we started taking phone calls some of the first uh, logged phone calls were coming uh, respectfully from their tribal members. And I'm talking of Oglala Sioux. Uh, there was an instance where a tribal farmer uh, was ranching, getting ready for calving season, and had some nephews that were living in Nebraska. Uh, they weren't being able to come across um, on that state highway. I'm not sure what highway that is, but, but that was the concern he had. And so uh, that is one instance uh, whereupon we had, uh, you know, a circumstance um, with that issue. Has that been a follow-up? Has that been it? Uh, no, that would not be the only um, phone call that we've received as a state of South Dakota. We've received many phone calls, and I believe if you would ask our congressional delegation they would indicate that they're getting a lot of phone calls too. And as this is being a federal issue, um, those offices might be good to reach out to. Thank you. Governor JP from KORN News Radio. Sure, go ahead, JP. Thank you. I see that the uh, Pine Ridge Reservation is on a 72 hour lockdown due to the uh, positive testing of uh, two people on the reservation. Do you have any uh, concerns uh, about that? Well, they certainly have authorities when it comes to their tribal government and decisions that they make um, for their people. I'll have Kim speak specifically to those two positive cases and share what she knows. Um, so we did see media reports um, here this afternoon indicating uh, two additional cases in Oglala, Lakota County. Those 
um, did not come in um, and were not reported by 5 p.m. yesterday, so they were not part of the count today. Um, based on those media reports, we would expect to see those um, tomorrow. And um, I'll just refresh people's memories. The way that that reporting happens is once a lab processes a test for COVID-19, they notify the person's provider um, of the test result, and then it's that provider that notifies the patient. And so after the, all of that happens, the Department of Health gets notified. Um, as in any other case, we would uh, commence a, an investigation at the state level to identify any close contacts of those positive cases and help people um, have the right direction so that they can stay safe and, and keep others safe. Thank you. And a good one thing that I think is a re good reminder for everybody in the state of South Dakota that we provide opportunities to individuals who have tested positive from the virus, an opportunity that if they can't self-isolate at home in their residence, that we will help them uh, find a spot that they could isolate and protect themselves and their family and keep them healthy. Uh, Bob? Governor Mike Tanner from KWAT. Mike, I'm going to take your question and then I'm going to go to Bob here in the room. Thank you, Governor. Um, it was announced uh, here recently that the North Dakota State Fair is canceled for this year. Do you envision a scenario where the South Dakota State Fair could still be held? And when those decisions are made, will you or a member of your team be part of those conversations? Yes, uh, Lieutenant Governor Larry Roden is working on State Fair planning today. Uh, we do hope to hold the South Dakota State Fair and plan to do so. We're thinking out of the box about ways that we can continue on with the fair and still keep pe people safe and public health a priority. Uh, Bob? Thank you. Uh, Governor, uh, just to change, mm -hmm. focus a little, a little bit uh, on the PPE equipment you're going to be giving away. Um, is the state paying for that? So the question was around the PPE for healthcare workers. Um, that, that is equipment that's been provided to us through FEMA, and so um, that was, there will not be any charge to um, licensees that uh, request that PPE from their licensing board. Um, I do want to reiterate, though, that um, we're not sure if this is going to be something that we, we would be able to maintain. It could very well be a one-time opportunity, but nevertheless, we're happy to get that out there um, into healthcare providers' hands. What value would you put on it? Um, that'll, you know, it really depends um, at 95. How, how, many, how many units do you have? Um, so our state stockpile, um, of course, um, is larger than what we'll be seeing, um, you know, being put out um, for this particular uh, need. But we will be making sure that folks have access to N95 masks. Those have come down in price recently if you're trying to buy those on the open market. Um, and um, they're not quite where they were before COVID started, but um, still, it's a valuable resource to those healthcare providers. We'll also have surgical masks available um, and face shields, um, which some healthcare professionals would, would find useful. Um, the value on those will really obviously depend on the volume, and we'll be working with our licensing board to determine um, kind of what the needs are out there. And one last question on that. Should they contact the licensing board? Or how yep, so, so providers, um, licensing boards will be reaching out to the license, uh, folks that they license and uh, pr be providing more information about the process to request PPE, um, as well as gauging kind of what kind of things would be most useful to their folks. Further questions? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Okay. The tribes don't remove the checkpoints on federal and state highways. Will you continue with the lawsuit? You know, I'm not certain about that question, but I did send uh, the chairman a letter today, and I'm hoping he responds. I think there was another question. Um, I have a I have a question, a quick question about the PPE equipment. Sure. Um, is any of that going directly to some of the reservations? So the, P the PPE is geared towards uh, licensed healthcare professionals um, statewide, so um, it won't be limited in any way, and um, it would be available to folks um, no matter where they're practicing. And I also have one more question. Um, when it came to the Oyate Health Center here in Rapid City, 
uh, there are some concerns about the whole case number reporting and finding out if South Dakota Department of Health is kind of saying this and telling us in enough time and giving us notice and whatnot. I mean, can you respond to any of that? Um, I'm not sure what you're referring to. I can tell you that the process um, for lab result uh, reporting is the same no matter um, where those labs are. And so if um, there's a lab out in Rapid City that's, that's doing COVID tests, they would be required to report positive and negative cases to us um, just like any other lab would. Um, we do have, um, you know, as I've mentioned, we have a 5 p.m. cutoff so that we can start to notify individuals and start to investigate those cases in terms of what we report the next day. But the reporting requirements are the same no matter what lab is doing the testing. Thank you. Uh, Lee Strubinger at CPD. Sure, go ahead, Lee. Thank you, Governor. I was just wondering if you could comment real quick about the um, Eighth Circuit Court uh, decision from 1990 saying that the state of South Dakota doesn't have uh, jurisdiction over uh, highways within, within tribal land. There are several different court decisions at play here in this situation that we have, so to comment on one would not be appropriate. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Lee. Any further questions? Okay. Okay. Megan Rack here again with Center One. Sure, go ahead, Megan. Can you talk about what she sent in the letter today to Chairman Fraser and if a similar letter was sent to uh, President Bearrunner? You know, we will um, let Chairman Fraser, uh, and we are an anticipating a letter to, I'm not sure if he's received it yet, President Bearrunner as well. Um, but if he has, um, then we will certainly be sharing that with you. But I wanted to give them the courtesy of letting them have it first and digest it and get a response. So we'll, we'll share that with you. Just wanted to uh, make sure that they had adequate time before we, we and gave them an opportunity to respond to us before we released it to the press. Just out of courtesy and respect. Okay, thanks so much.